Hi everyone, welcome back. I've got another book review for you this afternoon in this video and it's uh, called The Zombie Survival Guide Complete Protection from the Living Dead and it's by an author called Max Brooks as you can see in bold lettering there. Uh, on the back, price of £8.99 sterling. I think I picked this one up for about £6 off Amazon. Um, was recommended this book by one of my wife's uh, former colleagues in her old job who had read it and uh, suggested I give it a go. And I've got to say, I was pretty sceptical to begin with. Now, uh, I'm a pretty matter-of-fact kind of guy. I'm not somebody that, uh, you know, worries too much about the living dead. Knocking on my door anytime soon. Um, so when somebody suggested to me to go out and buy a book, spend my hard-earned cash on a book, uh, on a book even, around uh, zombies and surviving a zombie apocalypse, um, I was pretty sceptical. Um, but actually, getting towards the end of the book, I was pleasantly surprised. Hence the reason I've decided to do a review on it for you. It's not a lot of money compared to other books uh, out there on the market. Um, you know, six quid from Amazon with free, free delivery is pretty reasonable. Um, right from the start, this is not a book that is supposedly aimed towards the police or military. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just read you a quick um, couple of sentences or paragraph from the, uh, from the introduction. Um, I'll start right from the very beginning, it's quite, it's quite funny in, in, in this sense, but The dead walk among us, it says. Zombies, ghouls, no matter what they label, these somnambulists are the greatest threat to humanity, other than humanity itself. To call them predators and us prey would be inaccurate. They are a plague and the human race their host. The lucky victims are devoured, their bones scraped clean, their flesh consumed. Those not so fortunate join the ranks of their attackers, transformed into putrid, carnivorous monsters. Conventional warfare is useless against these creatures, as is conventional thought. The science of ending life, developed and perfected since the beginning of our existence, cannot protect us from an enemy that has no life to end. Does this mean the living dead are invincible? No. Can these creatures be stopped? Yes. Ignorance is the undead's strongest ally, knowledge their deadliest enemy. That is why this book was written, to provide the knowledge necessary for survival against these subhuman beasts. Great stuff. Survival is the key word to remember, not victory, not conquest, just survival. This book will not teach you how to become a professional zombie hunter. Anyone wishing to devote their life to such a profession must seek training elsewhere. This book was not written for the police, military or any government agency. These organisations, if they choose to recognise and prepare for the threat, will have access to resources far beyond those of private citizens. It is for them that this survival guide was written. Private citizens, people with limited time and resources, who nonetheless have refused to be victimised. Now what a great opening statement for the introduction. It goes on basically to say that, you know, naturally many other skills, wilderness survival skills, primitive living skills, leadership skills, first aid, all those sorts of things are going to be necessary to learn in um, you know, any situation where zombies start to roam the earth. Um, now I'm not military trained, um, but the book does have a little bit of a flavour of military sort of tactics um, within it. And, and running through it and to be honest with you I struggled with the middle of the book because I think a, a fair amount of the book is devoted to those tactics um, you know that the military might use and I'll, I'll show you a few of those in a minute um, but all in all it was a, it was it wasn't a bad little read it was it was quite an escapist kind of read where the author Max Brooks has, has tried to put this book forward as, uh, as as really being a survival guide for the eventuality of this stuff actually happening and, and it starts off with a, a little bit of a, um, a description of the differences between um, zombies, the voodoo zombie or the Hollywood zombie. Right at the very beginning it starts off with a, a, a description of Solanum or Solanum which is the virus that is apparently can apparently cause um, zombification. Um, 
where it comes from, transference, cross species transference and infection, treatment of the virus, so on and so forth. A bit about the physical abilities of zombies and all those sorts of things, behavioural patterns, that that's kind of business. Then a bit about outbreaks, class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Um, the following chapters are all around weapons and combat techniques and this is where it starts to get a little bit sort of tactical for my mind but you know there is some good information in there to think about because you know really as it says in the beginning we're, we're used to seeing wars or hearing about wars or even many of you will be used to fighting in wars where your opponent or your enemy is, is of, of a human nature they suffer from the cold, from hunger, tiredness, fatigue um, all those sorts of things that, that can affect human beings are now no longer a threat um, to this, I don't know whether you call it a species, but you know, zombies basically. So it really gets you into a thought process of uh, uh, a concept and a way of thinking against a foe that doesn't have any of those worries. Um, so going into weapons and combat techniques, um, which I'm sure quite a few people would be uh, interested in seeing and actually it kind of um, made me think a little bit because I, I thought well you know why, why not sling a massive submachine gun around you and just blow the crap out of these things but um, actually you know that probably wouldn't work it's headshots and all that kind of business you know that uh, that takes them down um, goes on to things like the, the tactics side of things so the, on the defence and on the run uh, different vehicles that you can use and the terrain types that will be effective uh, um, in covering on the attack, general rules about going on the attack, weapons and gear, transportation, again terrain types and strategies. Um, living in an, under, in, in an undead world, they, they devote a few pages to what would happen if a class 4 outbreak actually did uh, become a reality and, and where life as we know it would be. And the kind of concepts and the way of thinking that you'd need to adopt. And then further on you've got apparently recorded attacks going from 60,000 BC in Central Africa right the way through to 2002 and uh, St. Thomas um, Virgin Islands. Um, as I say, I started out a little bit sceptical of this, but then I started thinking to myself, well, you know, what if? Um, I'm pretty sure that there's no kind of virus around that uh, can actually turn people into flesh-eating and hunting zombies. But then I started thinking to myself, well, if the government and organisations are um, bankrolling the creation of new viruses, just take influenza for example, you know, they're, they're coming up with new strains of influenza all the time. And the reasoning behind that is apparently to be able to come up with antidotes for those viruses, just in case they manifest themselves out in the real world. That kind of worries me a little bit. So when I start thinking along those lines, I kind of start thinking, well, who's to say that somebody couldn't come up with a virus like Solanum or Solanum, um, you know, with the intention of turning our soldiers, for example, into fighting machines that have no feeling, um, pain receptors, all those sorts of things. They can go through the cold, deal with their elements. You know, who's to say that won't go a little bit too far and you end up creating this Solanum virus? I did just something to think about and when you take that uh, into consideration there's a nice little quote here on the back that says um, a tome you start reading just for fun and then at page 50 you go out and buy a machete just to be on the safe side I think I might go and get myself a machete I haven't got one so I think I might go out and uh, invest in one of those I would definitely recommend reading it guys, thanks very much for your time and uh, really appreciate all your support, I hope that's been useful, um, let me know if you decide to go out and buy that and of course let me know if uh, you've got any thoughts on it afterwards as well. See you in the next video.